The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Slander, whose edge is sharper than the sword and whose tongue out-venoms all the worms of the Nile, from which we can see that Mr. Shakespeare did not look kindly upon slander. And yet, what would we ever do without it? With what would we fill our newspapers, our news broadcasts? What a world! Somebody's always eager, willing, and able to give us the dirt about somebody else. And we can't wait to hear it. mystery drama, Waste Paper, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Kim Hunter. I'll be back shortly with Act One. As long as crime is regarded as wicked, it will always have its fascination. When it is looked upon as vulgar, it will cease to be popular. It was Oscar Wilde, I think, who said something like that. And so, the major preoccupation of our society seems to be crime. After all, what fills most of the space on today's front pages? So let us proceed with our story, which begins in the office of Roger Williams, a captain of detectives. Send Melrose in here. Captain Williams here. No, nothing. Blank and zero. Yep, bear with me. I'm putting one of my best people on it. You sent for me, Captain? I have an assignment for you, Detective Melrose. Did somebody lose a dog? <laughs> Why, oh, Milrose, you're with Homicide now. Oh, did somebody kill a dog? I have a nice little case for you. Mm-hmm. A little something tucked away someplace where I can't do any harm. Now, Milrose, I have a homicide for you. A homicide? See? It happens. Finally, your very own homicide. What kind of homicide? Well, it's not a page one homicide. Uh, naturally. Uh, don't say naturally. Already the morning paper has called for details. Make sure they spell your name with two L's, and so your career is launched. What are the details, Captain? The lady's name is... Uh, was Martha Malone. Age 52. Uh-huh. A woman. Yes, I thought you might be more comfortable with a woman. Why? Well, you're a woman, aren't you? Yes, Captain. Oh, Mrs. Malone was a widow. She worked as a cleaning lady. She was murdered last night. Here are the details on the sheet. And now, Detective Melrose, it's all yours. <laughs> He means well. They all mean well. I suppose they can't help it. They were raised that way. Well, at least he gave me a case. Well, he had to. I guess he wanted to be able to say, look, in my division, women detectives are right out there in the field. <sighs> so what have I got here? A cleaning woman killed. Why, how, and by whom? How is easy. A thirty-two caliber bullet through the heart. That was in the medical report. She worked for a firm called Novelties Incorporated. Yes. Yeah. Who? Oh, uh, well, yeah, yes, have him come in. Uh, yes? I'm Detective Milrose. Uh, oh, 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 you're Detective Milrose. Well, I thought that, uh... uh yes? Uh, uh, oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. You are uh, Stanley J. Drone? Yes, yes, that is correct, yes. You're president of Novelties Incorporated? Uh, well, uh, to be accurate, and I suppose we must in these things, I I am vice president and chief executive officer. Uh, you, you employed a Mrs. Martha Malone? Oh, oh, yes, yes, terrible thing, just terrible. How long had she worked for you? Nine years. Did you know Mrs. Malone very well? Well, uh, just uh, just as the uh, as the char lady, or uh, the cleaning woman. And then you, you didn't really know her? Well, I was aware of the fact that uh, she existed uh, some evenings. Uh, yes, yes, I might stay late, and uh, there was this lady... Oh, 
drably dressed, uh, you know, in a working costume. And uh, she would be going about her business. Uh, did you ever speak to her? Uh, well, in more than nine years. <laughs> what did I ever say to her? I say, good evening, and uh, yes, I'm through here, and uh, you may start clean. <laughs> that was the extent of your conversation? Uh, yes. <laughs> Isn't it remarkable? Um... This building, uh, do you occupy all of it? Yes, yes, it's mostly offices, uh, but we use some space for warehousing. What is the nature of Novelties Incorporated? We import merchandise from the Far East, you know, from Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, Korea, and so forth. Uh, what sort of merchandise? Uh, little novelties, uh, drinking glasses, and uh, music boxes, uh, small figurines, and uh, so forth, so forth. So forth. Uh, what's worth stealing? Uh, not very much. Uh, you'd have to load a, a very large truck with enough of the merchandise to make it profitable. Mm -hmm. Money? Oh, no, 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 none to speak of. Uh, we're a wholesale house, and uh, we're paid, and we pay by check, and uh, various commercial paper. <laughs> there isn't any cash worth considering. <sighs> Uh, Mr. Drone, I understand you were the one who found the body. Uh, yes. You see, I'm uh, usually the first to arrive in the morning. Oh, and, uh, can you describe what you saw? Uh, well, uh, I told the police officer. I, I know. Uh, please, tell it again. Uh, yes, yes, that makes sense. Well, I arrived here at uh, 6.30, and I drove my car around to the back entrance. I took out my key, and I opened the rear door, and then I walked in. And uh, then I heard it. Uh, the vacuum cleaner. Oh, my goodness. I said to myself, uh, is the cleaning lady still here? Uh, just a minute. Hmm? When you described this to the police officer, you, you didn't mention a vacuum cleaner. Uh, oh, ah, well, I, the state I was in. Uh, you heard the vacuum cleaner. This one here? Uh, yes. I haven't had a chance to... Uh, well, uh, well, anyhow, it, it, it has a certain sound to it. Uh, yes? Uh, uh, let me turn it on. Ah! Here, usually the sound goes up and, and down and, and because it's uh, moving around and working. Uh, uh, but when it's just on, it uh, just has that same steady uh, hum. Do mm. uh, you mind if I turn it off? Well, honestly, every time I hear a vacuum cleaner again, I, I'm going to have a nightmare. Well, it was coming from my office, so I walked in. And there she was, uh, lying on the floor, and I could see the blood, and I knew she was dead. That vacuum cleaner is very loud, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, something's loose there, I think. I, I've been meaning to have it fixed, but, I, well, I guess now I'll just get rid of it. Uh, well, hmm. thank you, Mr. Drone. Uh, there's nothing else you want to ask me? Hmm? Uh, not at this time. Yep, you ready to type it up? I haven't even begun, Captain. Well, what have you been doing all morning, Milrose? I spoke to Mr. Drone, her employer. Oh, and what could he tell you? Well... He's not a witness. You understand that, don't you? Oh, yes. All he did was find the body. There are no witnesses. Uh, yes, but... Milrose, all we've got is a dead old lady. She was only 52. And we've got the bull that killed her. And that's all. We've got no place to go. But why was she killed? We may never know. That's what happens so much of the time. These things just fade away. You haven't answered my question. Why was she killed? Well, somebody came to burglarize the place. Mr. Drone says there was nothing of value to be stolen. Okay, but the thief doesn't know that. He's just freelancing along. He blunders into the poor cleaning lady. Maybe she screams. Maybe he panics. And he shoots her. I don't think so. You don't? He didn't blunder into her. Well, how do you know? The vacuum cleaner. It could be heard all over the building. What vacuum cleaner? Drone says when he opened up, he heard the vacuum cleaner. It must have been going on all night. Or are you telling me the thief shot her and then turned the vacuum on? Why would he do that? The answer is he didn't. No, he knew she was there. He could have avoided her or backed away and called it off. No. He killed her deliberately. Mm, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, but he could have confronted her to ask her, uh, where's the safe, or some question like that. He'd have had to make her turn the vacuum cleaner off. With that racket, you could hardly hear yourself think. No, Rose, you're introducing a complication. And so I have to ask you the question you've been asking me. Why was she killed? I don't know. I want to find out. I'll give you one more day. One more day? Police work has become a matter of logistics and production. We must invest our resources where we have the greatest chance of a tangible return. It was hard to admit it, but he was right. On any given day, there can be two, three, four, as many as five, or even six murders in a city the size of ours. 
And they keep piling up. Some of them you know you can never solve. It's like casualties in wartime. You try first to save those with the best chance of recovery. Listen, detective. Don't become personally involved with your cases. Don't allow them to become part of you. Sometimes you just have to let them go. I still have a day. I know you feel a deep sympathy for this poor old lady. But without facts, evidence, and material we can hand to the prosecuting attorney, there'll be nothing we can do. May I help you, Detective Milros? Uh, Father Lisinski, uh, one of your parishioners, Mrs. Martha Malone. Ah, yes, poor Mrs. Malone. What can you tell me about her? Detective, we are talking about a saint. A saint? Of course, she was one of the many millions of charitable, warm-hearted people to whom religion was a, a vital, dynamic, and living thing. Uh, do you know of any reason why anyone should wish to kill her? Kill her? Oh, no, no, never. Not deliberately. You say she was a good woman? She lived to do charity. Charity? Yes. The most wonderful of all charity. That charity which is done quietly, without ostentation, without thought of reward or approval. Oh, can you tell me about this charity, Father? Well, while she lived, she imposed silence upon me. But now that she has gone, the world should know who she was. Who was she? Oh, a soul of kindness and generosity. She donated thousands of dollars each year. Thousands? How many thousands of dollars, Father? Oh, she would give six, seven, sometimes ten thousand. I see. She would bring me the money at intervals during the year, and she would say, Father, use this as you see fit. Pay your poor family's rent. See that the poor youngster may have tuition for college. And one year she actually gave you ten thousand dollars? Yes. Actually, it was last year. Ten thousand dollars? And it did so much good. So much good. Yes, I, I, I'm sure of it. Sorry to bother you again, Mr. Drone. No, please, please. Uh, well, anything I can do. How much did you pay, Mrs. Malone? I, I, I have the figures right here. Uh, uh, her take-home pay, was, well, it uh, would average $113.09 a week. Mm. <laughs> Would you know if, if she had another source of income? Well, I would assume that if she had another source of income, she wouldn't work as a charwoman. Or perhaps, yes, I have no right to make that assumption. Uh, how, how did you pay? Cash or check? Oh, a payroll check. Our policy is to have very little cash on hand. Then she would have to go someplace to cash the check. Yes, yes, yes. I have one here. It was cancelled by the Citizens National. I see. Thank you very much, Mr. Drone. Captain, she was taking home $113.09 a week. That's $5,880.68 a year. And do you follow this? Where's it going? She paid $122.40 a month for rent. That's over $1,400 a year. Well, why is it important to know this? And then there were food, clothes, medical bills, car fare, and all the rest. So? So you would think she could barely make it through the year. Maybe not at all. All right. So last year, where did she get $10,000 to donate to charity? That's a good question. Certainly it's thought-provoking. Where is she, or was she, getting that kind of money? Her employer insists that there's practically no cash to speak of in the Novelties Incorporated building. But obviously, the place is a gold mine. We'll do some prospecting when I return with Act Two. Twenty pounds. Annual expenditure, nineteen pounds. Result, happiness. Annual income, twenty pounds. Annual expenditure, twenty-one pounds. Result, misery. That made very good sense when Mr. Dickens wrote it. Spend less than you make. But we are confronted by a poor lady 
who only made some 6,000 a year and yet was able to donate 10,000 to charity. How did she do it? I don't know. Well, did she have another source of income? We don't know. Money in the bank? She cashed her paychecks at Citizens, but she didn't have an account there. Hmm. Uh, did she have an account anywhere else? A safe deposit box? I don't know. Well, why don't you find out, Detective Milrose? I'll need more than a day, Captain Williams. Take two days. I needed three, and I even had help. But there was nothing. We searched her flat. No sign of any money or any place it could be coming from. Where'd she be getting that money? And she could have stolen it from the building. But Mr. Drone assures me there's nothing to speak of on the premises. Merchandise. She took the stuff home and sold it. She'd have to steal so much it would have been noticed. Especially enough to add up to $10,000. Uh, well, now, Detective, you've reached that point. What point? Where you come up with a theory. Oh. Well, you better have one. You see, I assigned you originally because I figured it was a day's work and into the files. But you came up with that vacuum cleaner. So that knocked out the surprise sneak they fangled. Now we find out she was a lady of means. So, A, why was she working as a cleaning woman? And B, where was she getting that money? But I don't have any theories yet. Well, the chief inspector's going to want a theory. Do you think you can uh, have one by the end of the day? By the end of the day? Well, it doesn't have to be right. Just make it sound plausible. Theory. Whoever came into the building that night came to see Mrs. Martha Malone and not to rob the place. Whoever it was, he or they didn't come to discuss anything at all with her because he or they didn't bother to shut off the noisy vacuum cleaner. So she was marked for death. Therefore, it was an execution. But for what reason? I had to talk to Mr. Drone again. Sorry to bother you, Mr. Drone. Uh, oh, no, no, Detective Milrose. <laughs> Is uh, that the uh, proper way to address you as a detective? Uh, yes, uh, Detective Milrose. Mm. As far as we know, you were the last one who saw Mrs. Martha Malone alive. Uh, yes, yes, I believe you could say that. Yes. Except for the killer. Oh, well, naturally, yes. You worked late that night? Uh, uh, yes, uh, till about 9 p.m. Yeah, we have so much paperwork, even with computers. It was absolutely staggering. You say you worked till 9 p.m., and Mrs. Martha Malone arrived while you were still there? Yes, I, I could hear her at work, yes. Then uh, when you left, you say goodnight to her? Oh, yes, yes, certainly. There was no one else in the building? No, 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 no one who had any legitimate business here. You didn't see or hear anyone? Uh, no, no, no one, uh-huh. How did you leave the building? How? Well, there are two doors, one front and one rear. Oh, oh yeah, by the rear door. Was the door locked? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We locked both doors, the front and rear, at six o'clock. <laughs> and the front door, when you left, was that locked also? Uh, yes, I always check it before leaving. It's a, a, a reflex action, you might say. <laughs> so you opened the rear door and locked it after you yes, left? Yes, yes, yes. So then, as far as you know, Mrs. Martha Malone was all by herself in the locked building. Yeah, you could say that, yes. Who carries a key to the building? I do. Anyone else? Uh, Mrs. Malone did, yes. And no one else? No, no, no. When Mrs. Malone came to work, I assume she filled out an application. Oh, yes, 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 I have it here. Ah, whom does she list as next of kin? Uh, or a person to be notified? Uh, oh, uh, well, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, oh, Nobody. No one at all? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see the space. Yeah, it's empty. Do all your employees have insurance policies? Oh, oh, oh yes. You'd be surprised what I have to pay in this so-called free. Uh, did Mrs. Malone have one? Oh, absolutely. Uh, whom did she list as beneficiary? Uh, oh, uh, one moment. Uh, oh, yes, it, uh, here it is. Uh, Father uh, Stephen Lasinski of, uh, of St. Mary's Church. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Drone. I checked with the Borg. Who had claimed Mrs. Malone's body for burial? The answer, Father Stephen Lisinski. After all she had done, I was not going to allow that beautiful soul to disappear into a nameless pauper's grave. I see. Father Lisinski, are you aware that you are the beneficiary of her insurance policy? Oh, yes. She told me to use the money for those in want. Why should she leave you the money? 
It's not uncommon for people to leave their money to the church. Yes, but she left it to you, personally. Oh, even to the most devout, the church can sometimes seem extremely large and impersonal. I was someone she could talk with, relate to. But didn't she have a family? Well, she never spoke of anyone. She gave me uh, what for a poor working woman would be a considerable sum of money. Yes. And I would say to her, Martha, are you sure you're not neglecting your own? And she would answer, the poor, everywhere, are my very own. Did she have any friends? Uh, she kept her own counsel. We have many activities in the church here, social affairs. I did want her to become involved, but she would always answer, hey, I am not a mixer. Her name was Mrs. Martha Malone. What about Mr. Malone? I don't know. She never spoke of him. And that's all you can tell me about her, Father Lisinski? I'm so sorry. I wish I could be of greater assistance. Oh, ex excuse me. Yes. Oh, I don't know about that. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure we can count on it anymore. Now, perhaps, perhaps I can call her former employer and explain the situation. Yes, yes, I'll have to let you know. Goodbye. Talking about Mrs. Malone, this was another example of her good works. This call I just received. Yes? You see, there was considerable waste paper at her building. Very nice quality. The small packages that they imported would be wrapped in it. At the end of the day, she would gather all these wrappings and bring them here. Why? It would be part of our scrap drive, and it would be worth some money when we disposed of it. Over the years, he, he demanded to a respectable sum. I must call her employer to see if he'll permit us to continue. Well, thank you very much, Father. So, here we are, Detective Milrose. Where are we, Captain Williams? At that point where we must face the files. You mean this case is about to be closed? I'm afraid so. No. Why not? This woman was murdered. But so were nine other people since her body was discovered. But obviously somebody was out to kill her. I've already bought that. How can we just drop it? We're not dropping it. We're merely concentrating our resources in areas which may be more productive of results. Look, no matter how you slice it, Captain. Okay, okay, I know. It sounds like a great case. An ordinary cleaning woman dispenses large sums of money to her church charities. Where does she get it? That's number one. And that's not all. She's deliberately murdered. Why? <laughs> that's a very good question. Furthermore, this woman is absolutely alone in the world. No friends, no family, no criminal record. There's too much in this case to just drop it. Give me an angle to let you follow. Open up a lead. Right now, knowing all you do, fire it up as you are. Where are you going to go? What's the next thing you're going to do? I don't know. Well, this is the critical moment, Detective Norose. All right, you need a break. Something has to happen, some kind of insight, some kind of clue. You simply have to get lucky. I know that. All right, let me see if I can help you. Give me uh, Jerry Marks of the Journal Herald. Yeah, hold on. I could use a break. I don't want to let it go. Yeah, I know, I know. But a couple of more important people have been killed this week. More important? Well, more noteworthy, more newsworthy, of more interest to the community at large. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jerry. Look, that old cleaning woman that was killed last week. She wasn't old. Uh, yeah. Well, could you, uh, could you run a picture of her? Uh, there's a good shot from the morgue. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I know that nobody cares. Yeah. I, I know it was last week's murder. Uh, look, let me put it this way. Why don't you do it? Because I'm asking you to. Uh, are you Detective, uh, Detective Milrose? Uh, yes. My name is Poster. James Poster, Jr. Uh, yes, Mr. Poster. Uh, you're the person in charge of the Malone murder thing? Uh, yes. Well, uh, it's said in the paper if anyone had any information. Do you have any information, Mr. Poster? Well, I saw the picture in the paper and I recognized it at once. I couldn't be mistaken. It was Martha. She was ten years older, but the face, that, that, that beautiful face. Did you know her? Did I know her? My life hasn't been the same since. Oh, all right, Mr. Poster. What can you tell me? 
Well, do you think it's the same, same Martha Malone? Martha Malone, who had to be the world's greatest account supervisor. Account supervisor? Yes, at Poster and Pine. We only happen to be the 14th largest advertising agency in America, which for all practical purposes means the world. And she was an account supervisor? Uh, could she ever turn and twist a client like a lump of inert putty? And that's what she did. She was in advertising. My dear detective, she was not in advertising. She was advertising. And she made money. Money? <laughs> My goodness. Well, why does she leave? Why did she become a cleaning woman? Well, I, I didn't know she'd become a cleaning woman. I only know she dropped out of sight completely. Why? Well, it happened after Walter had been killed. Walter? Yes, her husband. It's just one of those terrible, uh, unfortunate things. Yes? Well, one of her accounts was a company that made small sporting airplanes, and her husband was an enthusiastic amateur pilot. He was killed while he was flying one. Oh? Yes, and unhappily, there had been talk of some defective components in the uh, manufacturer. Yes? Well, you see, she insisted in all her copy that the uh, planes were perfectly safe. Oh, I understand. Yes, and the day after he died, she said to me, uh, I have been punished. I've let a life filled with falsehood, and now I shall do penance for the rest of my days. Uh, she was a very dramatic person. Did she say anything else? Yes, yes. She said, from now on, I'll devote my life to hard labor and to charity. I'll give up everything I used to live for, all the vanities of the world. And the next day, she was gone. Just like that? She vanished without a trace, emptied her bank accounts, sold everything. I never saw her again. She was a wealthy woman? Well, aside from her salary, she must have had several hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> and she gave it all up to become a cleaning woman. But why was she murdered? What did poor, wonderful Martha Malone ever do to anyone? Well, that's the problem. And it's been the problem since the very opening moments of Act One. And it seems that the more we learn about Mrs. Martha Malone, the less we really know about her. Well, all we can do now is wait for the third act. not that so few murders are solved, but that so many are. When the motives are obvious, when the witnesses are present, there is basically no problem. It's that random killing of someone for no apparent reason, by no one we know of, that usually slips into the back of the file folder. It may be filled with fascinating possibilities and intriguing twists and turns, but there is nothing solid for the police to investigate. So, since they can't, they don't. Is that what's building up here? All right. You've got an angle. That uh, airplane outfit she was doing the advertising for, maybe somebody who lost someone had it in for her. Oh, in the first place, the average person wouldn't blame her, but the company. I'll uh, check it out anyhow. I did. There was a defective part, all right. But only her husband was killed. Yeah. Well, Detective, how do you feel? Don't take me off it. I won't. You have a whole new world to play with. Her past life, the glamorous lady. Did she have any enemies there? Oh, well, this Mr. Poster says she was well-liked. Mm. An attractive woman is never well-liked by everyone. We could assume that someone from her past tracked her down after ten years and managed to get into the place where she worked. And shot her. Mm -mm. I say she was killed because of a situation in the Novelties Incorporated building. Well, you've already established there was nothing to steal there. I thought we both agreed the object was not to steal anything, but to kill her. Why? I'm ruling out the past. Yeah, but the public doesn't. See here, tonight's paper. Uh, you're on page three. 
Murdered cleaning lady turns out to be former top drawer advertising executive. You gave that to the press? Well, why not? Can't do any harm, and it keeps them happy. It also keeps you on the case. And we have a lead we can justify. But it's all there, in that building. What's all there? I don't know what, but she was murdered. I looked at her picture... Not the mug shot from the morgue, but a glossy portrait that Mr. Poster had let me have. It showed a spectacularly beautiful woman in her early 40s. Her face was not only lovely to look at, but you could sense that she was a woman of keen intelligence. And she had chosen to spend the rest of her life on her knees, doing penance. Oh, that I could understand. But murder, why was she murdered? Go back over the same ground. But I've been over it and over it. I can only talk to two people, really. Father Lasinski and Mr. Drone. Talk to them. But they've already told me everything they know. People are always remembering little things. Drone told you something he neglected to mention to the first cop on the scene? No, you mean the vacuum cleaner. That vacuum cleaner is what put you in business. All right, I'll try again. It's your very own little case, detective. You have to nourish it. Keep it alive. Detective Milros, I know nothing of her past life. And therefore you would know none of her associates or, or her problems there, if any. None at all. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. Oh, no, I haven't. Oh. Well, why don't I take care of it right now while well, I'm thinking about it? Let me call you back. That was the chairman of our scrap paper committee. Would you excuse me? I have to call... Oh, where's that number? I looked it up. Ah, here it is. Ah, that you should be here. This has to do with Mrs. Malone indirectly. Mrs. Malone? I'm trying to continue her good work. Ah, hello. Um, how about this, Incorporated? May I speak with Mr. Drone? He, yes, I'm Father Lezinski of St. Mary's Church. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Drone. Yes, yes, as you know... Mrs. Malone used to supply us with some very nice paper from your plant. Well, nice as it was, it was scrap which was being thrown out. We were selling it to raise money for our parish charities, and I was wondering... Well, I was wondering if I could have a man pick it up. Well, yes. Oh, I understand. Well, yes, of course. Well, thank you, sir, in, in any event. Uh... He says he can do it. Oh? He says he has made arrangements with the scavenger. Who pays him for the paper? Of course, I can see his point of view. Yes, that's true. Uh, it's odd. What is? It may have been my imagination, but... He seemed quite frightened. Frightened? I think so. You're sure the word is frightened? Detective Milros, I'm more than sure. I know. Was this the break? The lead? The sudden flash of insight? I looked at Father Lisinski. I smiled to myself. If something really came of this, I would call it the revelation. I hope I'm not imposing again, Mr. Drone. Yeah, oh, oh, no, 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 Detective Milrose. I, I'm, I'm glad to be of help. I understand that Mrs. Malone used to collect the waste paper and donate it to her church. Uh, you mean uh, the wrappings? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, that's true. I understand that since her death, you've made other arrangements to dispose of them. Uh, uh, yes, I now, I now sell them to a private scavenger. I see. A fellow comes by with a van at the end of the day. Uh, who is he? Well, I uh, believe I told you he's a private scavenger. <laughs> Uh-huh. Um, what made you choose him? Did you go looking for a scavenger? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. As a matter of fact, he, he, he was, uh, I would assume, going about soliciting business. He, <clears throat> he came in off the street, you might say. Well, then it was rather something of a coincidence. Yeah, what was? 
that right after Mrs. Malone died, he should call on you. Oh, no, 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 no. It, it wasn't really. He uh, called on me before. <laughs> oh. Yes, uh, several times this past year. <laughs> well, why didn't you sell him the paper then? Well, I was going to. Uh, it, it certainly made sense, don't you know? It would be, but be the same as throwing money away. <laughs> well, so why didn't you? Well, I had called Mrs. Malone into my office to tell her that uh, she could no longer have the waste paper. <laughs> And what did Mrs. Malone say? Yeah, n nothing. You see, I couldn't tell her. You couldn't? Why not? Well, every time I was about to, there was a look on her face. What sort of look? Well, I, I don't know, but I, I was afraid of that look. Why? Because it was the kind of look that uh, seemed to go right through you. As if as if it could read every secret in your head, don't you know? Oh. And so the next time this fellow, this scavenger, came around to solicit the business, I, I just told him I'd made other arrangements. <laughs> that my cleaning woman was donating the waste paper to her church drive. <laughs> well, what did he say? Well, he didn't say anything. When did this discussion take place? So, well, I, I, I'm not sure. It must have been a two, oh, two, two or three weeks ago, yes. What is this scavenger's name? It is uh, A.J. Scoop, carting service. Thank you. Thank you very much, yes. Mr. Drummond. Oh, yes. Yeah, if I can ever be of any more help, Detective. Well, yes. oh, oh, here, in your wastebasket mm -hmm. here, uh, this is some of the wrapping paper. Yeah. Uh, may I have a few pieces? Oh, well, why, uh, of course. Uh, thank you again, <laughs> Mr. Drone. Well, what have you got? Well, I thought I might have something. This paper. Well? He imports little novelties and knickknacks from the Far East. This is what they're wrapped in. Everywhere I turn in this case, I come up against waste paper. She was collecting it. Somebody else wants to collect it. So I had the paper sent to the lab. Why? Well, I suppose they're smuggling drugs. That There might be some traces. Were there? No. Well, there might be an espionage angle, photos, messages, and invisible ink of some sort. Oh, man. No. You want some help? Sure. Feel the paper. Smooth it out. Okay. And now crackle it in your fingers. Well? I should have known. I should have known. It's okay. You're entitled to a little help in your very first case. <laughs> hey, look, we would have never gotten here without you. Yeah, that's the pickup van. And here's the address. A.J. Scoop Carting. Uh, carting, we know what they're doing, Captain. Well, there seems to be quite a few people there now. Hey, we're probably able to bag everyone. You, uh, you sure you want to go in? It's my collar, Captain. All right, let's go. Everett, Harry, follow us. Joe and Max, take the back and sides. You know what you ought to do now, don't you? You've got to get a warrant so you're entitled to do it. What? The cops do this all in the movies. Kick in the door. I'm wearing high heels. <laughs> you want me to do it? It'll still be your collar. Go ahead. <laughs> Police officers, stay where you are. There you are. Page one, the Herald. Page two, the record. Your first story. Detective Gertrude Milrose was responsible for the line of investigation that led to the arrest of a major counterfeiting ring. I had a great deal of help, Captain. Well, the case was broken when Detective Milrose discovered that the paper used to wrap the novelties, which was imported from the Far East, is a very distinctive grade of Chinese rice paper, which is ideal for use in counterfeit bills. It is, by sheer coincidence, the closest match to the genuine paper used by the Treasury and is almost impossible to obtain. And that was why she was killed. Waste paper. Just because of some waste paper. Waste paper. Have you any concept of the staggering amounts that pile up every day? So much paper. Indeed, waste paper may be truly said 
to be the basic debris of our society. Well, we may waste paper, but not time. So in a little while, I shall be back with you. murders, so few solutions, and well, we know why. Needed is the flash of insight, that crystal moment of clarity when everything comes together. Indeed, it is like the vision of creativity to the artist. Artists and detectives, we don't tend to think of them in the same terms, but why shouldn't we? Without that certain something called inspiration, for all their hard labor, they are doomed to remain in the dark. Our cast included Kim Hunter, Lloyd Batista, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. leak has been plugged at a nuclear power plant near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. A second has not, and very low level radiation now detected 16 miles away. I'm David Jackson reporting on the CBS radio network. Officials stress the radiation levels outside the plant are so low there's no immediate threat to health and safety. A federal government official says radiation detected a mile from the plant is about the same as that of a medical x-ray. The plugged leak was at the main reactor building. Correspondent Gary Shepard tells us about the other. A spokesman for Metropolitan Edison Company, which operates the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant, told CBS News tonight radiation is still leaking into the atmosphere from the auxiliary building of reactor number two. Low levels of radioactivity have been detected as far away as 16 miles from the plant, but officials of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, who have been investigating the nuclear accident for most of the day, say the amount of radiation at that distance is not dangerous. Much higher levels have been measured at the north gate of the plant. Power plant officials confirm tonight that radiation levels inside reactor number two's main building are extremely high, that the building has been sealed off, and it will be several days at the earliest before power plant employees will be able to enter it to conduct a complete damage assessment. Gary Shepard, CBS News, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Exactly what caused the pre-dawn accident at the plant is still not known. Federal officials, however, now say no damage was done to the reactor core, the part that holds the uranium. Earlier, there was concern there had been core damage. Power company official Jack Herbine says radiation contamination of plant workers was kept to a minimum. No one's been injured, and that's certainly in the, in the plant cleanup. Uh, we don't intend to, uh, to expose anyone. I'm sure that, that some of them got some exposure, but I'm, I am positive that uh, no one was overexposed. A federal expert on scene says at the reactor site proper, there is a serious contamination problem. But that serious problem, he says, is inside the reactor building and not out. The State Department has released two letters from Egypt's Prime Minister Khalil, sharply critical of a memorandum of agreement between the U.S. and Israel. That agreement details U.S. obligations to Israel, military and economic, should the new peace treaty collapse. Khalil calls that tantamount to an anti-Egyptian alliance. Secretary of State Vance says the Egyptians can have a similar pledge from the U.S. any time they want. The vote of no confidence in the British Parliament was close, a one-vote margin, but it was enough to bring down the Labour government of Prime Minister James Callaghan. First time in 55 years, Parliament's voted to turn a government out. New elections expected in May, and opinion polls show the Conservatives ahead right now 
indicating Conservative leader Margaret Thatcher stands a good chance of becoming Britain's first woman prime minister. Four cars of an Amtrak passenger train flipped over on their sides Wednesday night in north-central Montana. About 100 people were hurt, most of the injuries broken bones and bruises. An Atlanta jury has convicted the owner of Hustler magazine, Larry Flint, on 11 counts of obscenity. The sentence, fines of $27,500 and an 11-year suspended prison sentence. Sources close to the Atlanta grand jury investigation of Bert Lance's finances say Lance is suing for sanctions to be taken against government lawyers and some of the grand jurors. Lance reportedly claiming his rights to protection from self-incrimination and to due process have been undercut by improper leaks of information.